Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn to Jeremiah chapter 24. This is a continuation of the Jeremiah commentary series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Verse 1. The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. So everybody that thought that Jeremiah was a, a liar and a false prophet, well, they just found out that God's word came to pass. Uh, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar took him away. So, verse 2. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Now, what's up with this uh, figs? You know, what's up with that? Well, the Bible is full of symbolism. Remember, Jesus was always talking about, uh, you'll know people by their fruit. Ye shall know them by their fruit. You got good fruit and you got bad fruit. But the uh, fig, figs are a symbol of Judah, whereas the vine, the grapes, are a symbol of Israel. Now, Israel is indeed part of, uh, Judah is part of Israel, but not all of Israel is Judah. You know, everybody that's a, a Texan is an American, but not every American is a Texan. You got the uh, fruits and the flakes from California, and uh, then you got the nuts from uh, Florida. So the fruits and flakes in California and the nuts in Florida. And then you got the, uh, yeah. So, you know, that's how that works. So he's saying you got two baskets of figs. One is good, one is bad. Verse 3. Then said the uh, Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. So let's take a look at uh, trees and figs and uh, all that kind of stuff. All right, uh, law of first mention. Well, what some people call the law of first mention only works in the King James. So where are figs first mentioned in the Bible? King James, that is. Well, that's in Genesis 3, verse 1. Now, I know I'm probably covering a lot of this stuff. You've heard it before, but... I'm going someplace with this, so please bear with me. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And if you want to know who the serpent is, go to Re uh, Revelation chapter 12, called the, the dragon that old serpent called the devil and Satan. You know, the uh, so-called churches will turn this into a talking snake when it's a symbol of speech. Jesus was called the Lamb of God. Sorry, he didn't have four legs and a, you know, fluffy wool and, you know, come on, people. Symbolism. There's a lot of symbolism in the Bible. 
And then you got the idiots that say, well, you know, the Bible's all symbolic, not literal. And then you got the other side of the fence that'll say, well, the Bible's all, you got to you got to interpret the Bible literally. So when so when the Bible, so when King, uh, so when John the Baptist said, "Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world," was Jesus turned from a two-legged man into a four-legged animal? No. But this is why people don't understand. Well, that and they don't read. So, yea, hath God said, "Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden." Keep that in mind. The tree in the garden. Keep that in mind. Very important. You know, there's times the Bible talks about family trees. Family trees. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Eh, don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, well, that's the Bob translation. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Just like those two baskets of figs. The good ones, the bad ones, right? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons so where's the first time figs are mentioned the fig leaves. There you go. Right there. It's not a good thing. They're trying to cover their sin with fig leaves. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at Hosea chapter 9, verse 9. I don't want to make this a huge long Bible study. They, being Israel, they have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. Verse 10. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. Okay. Israel's compared to grapes. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at her first time, but they went to Baal Peor. I remember that's basically uh, Satanism. But they went to Baal Peor and separated themselves unto that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved. Now, in Matthew 21, verse 17, now in the morning, Matthew 21, 18, now in the morning, as he, Jesus, returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. Okay? Okay. No fruit, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Fig tree was a symbol of Judah. There was no fruit on it. It withered away. 
Jesus said, let no fruit on thee henceforth. Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. There will never be any good fruit on Judaism. Keep that in mind when you start looking at the Hebrew Roots Movement. No fruit. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 13. Matter of fact, we should read the whole thing, really. Luke 13, verse 1. There was present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell, and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Almost in the same breath, Jesus told him, repent. All right, verse 6, here we go, the fig tree. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Now remember, the vineyard is Israel. And who's the certain man? God the Father, right? A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. God the Father looks at Judah looking for some good fruit, and there's nothing. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? You know? Now, according to some Bible scholars, they say Jesus is uh, ministry was about three years. Some say, well, three, three and a half, something like that. I don't know if the Bible specifically mentions that. And if anybody knows, please leave me a comment. And hopefully uh, Tube does not delete that comment. Yeah, they've been deleting my comments too. So don't feel like you're the odd man or woman out. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? You know, get rid of this thing. It's just taking up space. You know? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. You know, I'm going to fertilize it. I'm going to give it something to grow. Is there a spiritual application here? Verse 9. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. What happened in 70 AD? The Lord cut it down. He destroyed the temple. Absolutely destroyed it. So, you know, in Revelation chapter 6 and verse uh, 12, look what it says about the figs. It says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So, you know, it's like a 
tree that gets hit by a windstorm, the fruit is not re yet ready. That You know, the fruit is not ripe. It's no good. And all the fruit flies off, I guess. So, uh, yeah. Now, what does the Bible say about trees? You know, you're, you're talking about trees in the Garden of Eden. Uh, when, uh, you know, Eve was, you know, the tree of good and evil, right? You're talking about fruit. Uh, and then Jeremiah is talking about good figs and bad figs. So what's up with that? Fruit and figs, what's up with that? Well, symbolism. Jeremiah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 31. Boy, this is a uh, this is a book full of symbolism. Uh, Daniel and Ezekiel are two books that I don't think I was even attempt to do a commentary on because uh, it's out there. It's way out there. All right, Ezekiel 31, verse 1. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Now remember, Egypt was a, a major world power at one time. I mean, they had the Nile River, and when you've got fresh water, you can grow crops. And if you can grow food, you can grow a population. And if you've got a lot of people, you've got, you could have a strong army. Whom art thou like in thy greatness? Verse 3, listen to this carefully. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. What is a cedar? A cedar is a tree. You ever heard of the cedars of Lebanon? They were world famous. They used the cedars in Lebanon to build God's temple with Solomon. And here, Ezekiel, speaking under the word of God, is comparing the Assyrians with the cedars of Lebanon. They were very, very tall trees from what I understand. Of course, they've all been cut down. Uh, do you know there was a pine tree in uh, Miami? It was called Dade Pine because Miami is Dade County. Matter of fact, they call it Miami Dade County. But uh, pine tree was really, really hard wood. I mean, it was unbelievably hard. I was living in a house that was probably 50 years old back in the 70s. No, 70s? 80s. Back in the 80s, that house was, had to be 50 years old. And it had some uh, old pine. And I don't know. I don't remember what I was doing, but uh, I grabbed, they, it had wood like on the carport up in the rafters and stuff. So instead of going to the hardware store and buying a, some wood, I just grabbed the stuff up in the the uh, rafters. It was loose wood. You know, I didn't tear anything apart. And I tried to put a nail in it, and the nail bent. And, and this was before when everything was made in the U.S., not China. I mean, if, if the nail would have bent, I'd have been cussing, you know, Chinese nails, you know. Well, back then I'd have been cussing, but... but uh, I don't know. You might have some choice words if I smack my thumb hard enough, but uh, yeah. But uh, I tried another nail. It bent. And I'm like, what the? This stuff was hard. It was harder than oak. And then I looked it up uh, or talked to somebody and it says, oh yeah, man, that's Dade Pine. Do you know they completely cut it down totally and didn't replant and it's extinct now to the best of our knowledge unbelievably unbelievable wood oh 
Here it is. I'm talking about Dade Pine, but we're supposed to be talking about Cedars of Lebanon. Ezekiel 31, verse 3. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of an high statue stature and his top was among the thick boughs hmm so he's a tree with fair branches verse 4 the waters made him great the deep set him up on high with her rivers running round about his plants and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, and his boughs were multiplied, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. The uh, capital of Assyria was Nineveh. You know, remember the book of Jonah? Jonah was sent to Nineveh, their capital. They were a major world empire uh, before Babylon. Matter of fact, Babylon conquered Assyria. I mean, they weren't a, a well, they were, they were a major power. I don't know if they were a, an empire like Babylon, but so let's see. Therefore, his height, his height, was exalted above all the trees of the field and his boughs were multiplied and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his boughs and under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young and under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Under the shadow of the cedar of Lebanon, the Assyrians, dwelt all great nations. Think about that. Symbolism, people. You know, sometimes when the Bible's talking about trees, it's talking about trees. Other times it's talking about family trees of people. So should we make a connection in the Garden of Eden when Eve fell and she partook of the tree of good and evil the tree of life I, you know think about it verse 7 thus was he who the the assyrian thus was he fair in his greatness in the length of his branches for his root was by great waters now, when you, uh, when you talk about, in Revelation, when it talks about uh, the woman that sits on many waters, it says that uh, the waters that thou sawest were uh, peoples, nations, languages, tongues. Well, people, nations, tongues. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's, when they talk about many waters, they're talking about people and nations. And his root was by great waters. And that's in Revelation 17, verse 15. And he said, saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, languages. All right, let's go back to G Ezekiel. Ezekiel 31, 7. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. Listen to this, verse 8. Very, very symbolic. The cedars in the garden of God. What was the garden of God? Eden. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. All right, verse 9. 
I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Wow, bet you you never heard that one in church before, huh? No. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. So were there other family trees in the garden of Eden that envied him? Obviously, these can't be plants. Plants don't have emotions like envy. I mean, you know. So, something to consider there. All right, let's skip to verse 18. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them. Let's read that again. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain with the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, saith the Lord God. Boy, yeah, you never, you know, I try to teach the stuff that the churches ignore and hide. Basically hide. They don't ignore it. They hide it. Big difference. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah, verse 24. I've hardly even touched Jeremiah, and here is half an hour's gone. Should we start over? Yeah, I guess we should. Verse 1, The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord after that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs. The good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. You know, they were sold into slavery, according to the word of God here, for their good? Yeah. Slavery for them was good. I mean, that's what a captive is. It's a slave. You know? Lord didn't want his people being polluted by the fake ministers, the fake pastors, the fake prophets. Well, you know, it was for their good. Verse 6. Now remember, the Lord told Jeremiah to tell the people that uh, if they submitted themselves unto the Babylonians, instead of fighting, that they would live. And, you know, a slave is a very valuable thing. So, you know, you're not going to mistreat your slaves unless, well, you might, if you're going to pay money for something you know you are you going to not take care of it you know maybe the the king but uh because he doesn't care but you know if somebody spends money for a slave they're going to make sure the slave is somewhat taken care of 
you know, they're not family, but, you know, you're going to make sure they get fed and have what they need because they're working for you. So that's how I see it. Verse 6. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. And after 70 years, that, was, uh, that came to pass. Verse 7. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Listen to this. verse. Now that's for the good figs. Now let's read about the bad figs. Verse 8. And as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil, surely, thus saith the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of, it, of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. The uh, Lord told his people, don't go to Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. You know, he took them out of Egypt. He didn't want them going back to Egypt. He says, don't go to Egypt. Submit yourselves unto King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and you'll live. But those that fought against King Nebuchadnezzar, and those that fled to Egypt, well, they had problems. Because basically, they didn't believe Jeremiah. They didn't believe the Lord. So, you reap what you sow. You plant wheat in the field, you're going to reap wheat. You plant weeds, you get weeds. And there's a lot of weeds, people. So, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, for their hurt, not for their good, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt. Have you ever had anybody taunt you? A taunt and a curse in all places, whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, war, the famine, and the pestilence, disease, among them, till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. Yep, you go to Babylon, submit yourselves, it'll be for your good. But if you don't listen, you go to Egypt, or you fight against Babylon, the Lord's going to send the sword, famine, pestilence, until you're destroyed from the land. Think about it. I'm telling you, it, it's... Uh, the Lord doesn't do things any different today than he did in the past. Except for, well, the Levitical... And animal blood sacrifices, you know, that was that was fulfilled in Christ. But uh, is there anything different? No, really, not really. But I cannot believe when I was a young child in the 60s, well, the early 60s, I mean, like 63, 64. I mean, I was young, but I remember... The streets were safe. People had respect for each other. And now it's, you know, it's, I can't believe the change that I've seen in my lifetime. And it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And this is only starting. So, God's judgment, people. So, like uh, Jesus said, repent, repent, 
Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. If you find a ministry that doesn't teach repentance, you're listening to a false teacher. Big time. I bet you the word repent doesn't even exist on TBN or the 700 Prophets of Baal Club. Yeah. So, and it's not thus saith Bob. No. It's thus saith Jesus, the Lord. So, all right, well, that's the end of Jeremiah chapter 24. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.